Hello guys, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is the first episode, first video of the channel of Smart Beam by Masood. Uh, since this is the first time that we know each other, I want to present myself a little bit more. I'm Masood, 28 years old. Uh, technically, uh, I'm a BIM specialist, uh, Dynamo developer somehow, because uh, it's been like around four years and working with the different BIM softwares like Revit, Navisource, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, and also the programming tools like Python and Dynamo. Uh, through this channel, uh, I want to record and share some tutorials about the mentioned softwares. Uh, but my main focus is about the Revit and Dynamo and the collaboration connection between these two tools. So I'm sure in the next videos, uh, in the future, I'm, I'm going to present myself more and you would uh, understand a lot of things about myself, but now I don't want to waste the time anymore. So uh, let's go to the two days tutorial. Uh, as you can see, I've already opened the Revit and this is the environment of the family, a family of this uh, theme profile. So what we are going to do today is about uh, make connection between the Excel file and the Revit uh, using the Dynamo and import uh, and extract some data from Excel through this family. Because as you can already know, uh, if we create a family, it doesn't matter what kind of family, architectural, structural, mechanical, or anything else, we always, through a parametric family, creating some parameters. Uh, maybe it's a geometric parameters or non-geometric. Here we have these geometric parameters, for example, as you can see, representing the different dimensions of these profiles. Uh, but the thing is, once we want to make duplicates of this family. The normal and usual way is to through the environment of family, we click this option, uh, we assign a name, and then we change and assign the different values for different parameters. So you can imagine how time consuming it would be if we wanna create, for example, 20, 30, or even more duplicates of just one family. And if you expand this uh, time for all the other families through your project, it would be really crazy, in my opinion, if we want to do this manually and really time consuming. So the good news is we have Dynamo and programming, and we can use this tool to uh, prohibit from the repetitive and the time consuming task like this duplication task. Uh, okay. So, uh, as you can see, we already have this family. Uh, in the next videos in the future, I will uh, also make some tutorials about some uh, family, like the, the, the uh, structural uh, profile, the beam or column profile, or even the architectural families, the complicated, most complicated. As you can know, there are thousands of the normal tutorials through the internet, through YouTube, you can find them. But since this channel uh, was called Smart Beam, so we want to develop some uh, smart and, uh, let's say, intelligent. Uh, we want to develop some uh, smart approaches through the Beam software, not the usual videos. Uh, OK. Uh, now we have an Excel file here representing the data and the uh, different dimensions and even other informations about this family, which is called angle unequal leg. Here you can find out all the dimensions, as you can see here. And in this shape, uh, we can also know S is the thickness, for example, R1 and R2 are the fillet arcs of the, uh, in the corner and the middle. And also we have B and A for the unequal legs. And also we have another, fan, another parameter, A1, here, representing the space between the two profiles because the, the final shape and profile of our beam is like this. Also, you can assign other parameters if you want. But in this video, I have just created these parameters. So for your family, for other objects, you, set, you can assign any other parameters. But just consider and pay attention. Any parameters that you have created through the Revit, here and here, these parametrics, you have to have those parameters also in your Excel file. 
because we want to make connection and bridge between this Excel file and Revit file. Now I want to load this family into the project. Here I've already opened and create a new project and I create a new instance here. We go to the 3D view. Yes. Here you can see this is the family and this is the parameters that we have. Uh, now I have to just uh, tell you one important point. Pay attention because these parameters in the family, the units are the millimeters. You can assign centimeters or meters, it doesn't matter. But I want you to pay attention to this point that if these, these values are in the millimeters, you have to put the unit of your Revit here, the length also in millimeters. Why it's so important? Because the unit in Dynamo, later that we want to work in Dynamo, the unit in Dynamo follows and are, uh, is dependent on the unit of the Revit. So if we put here centimeter, the unit in Dynamo would be centimeter. If meter, the Dynamo would be meter. Now we have to put millimeter because the values of the families are the millimeters and the values in the Excel files, it's important, are the millimeters. You can see here, millimeter, millimeter, millimeters. So now guys, uh, I want to open Dynamo. Here it's not possible for me to select this icon because I've already opened the Dynamo. Okay, here is the whole script of the Dynamo that I developed here. So I'm going to explain a step by step the important phases of the, this script. Uh, paying attention that first of the script, we need to import the data from Excel into the Dynamo environment. In order to do that, we need a node of the data import Excel. And as you already know, we need the pass file, file from pass, and assign the, the sheet names as we truly have in the Excel file. Of course, yes, this one, you have to write it down correctly and assign to the sheet name. If you run the code in this step, because I've already run it before, then you will have all the data from the Excel, all of them. And the Excel file will be automatically open for you. As you can see here, and you already know, uh, the data from Excel in the Dynamo will be read uh, row by row, I mean horizontally, not vertically and column by column. Later, we need to sort them in order to have the data vertically. But before that, uh, as you can see here, we don't need all of the data here. We just have to delete, for example, this row, the third row, and also the fourth one, which is the node. So in order to do that, we need to use this node uh, list and remove item at the index, which is a well-known and famous node in the Dynamo. We import a list and also we assign one, two, and three the indices of the uh, mentioned uh, rows in the Excel. Just consider this point that in the Dynamo, the indices is started from the zero. So as you can see here, the zero list would be A, B, S, R1, R2, which represent the first row in the Excel file here. But in the Excel, the indices are started from one. So pay attention just to this little difference. So we need to remove the second one, third, and fourth one, which in the Dynamo would be one, two, and three. Here, one, two, and three. Then after that, we need to just uh, keep the specific columns that we want. But before that, as I mentioned, we have to rate them vertically so we need a node of the list that transpose which uh, make our data vertically and as you can for example compare these two leads as you can see here here the data has read it has read uh, horizontally a b s r1 r2 but here we have a b s and the values as we have here in the excel file vertically so then we need to keep the specific columns. We have uh, the first, second, third, and the last column in the Excel file. First one, second, and third, R1 and R2. And the last one would be A1, which represent the spaces between the profiles. So we put in this a 0, 1, 2, and 18 in a code flag and using this script. 
then we need to separate these data and read them one by one. Uh, just consider this point in this list, uh, the first item of all of these uh, column would be the title. I mean this node. This uh, title, A, B, S, R1, R2, A1. We uh, kept them since now because we want to, in order to uh, get away from confusion or a loss of information in, in, in a not uh, appropriate way, we kept them. But in this step, we need to uh, just keep the values. And so in order to do that, we have to use uh, the list of the rest of the items, which removes the first item of the each list and keep the rest of the items. And if you consider here, we don't need uh, the, and we don't have the, the title of the R1, R2, A1, and so on. So here, for the first list, first column, A, B, S, I get them with the list that rest of the items, like the other ones. But here we need to separate them. Why? Because they are together like here. So we need to separate them 30, 20, 3. Because we need each value separately. So we use this node string dot display, which convert these values first to this string. And we have to assign a uh, a separator from the string. For example, I put this uh, multiple sign here with the X in order to split them one by one. And if you see the result, we have them separately 30, 20, and 3. Uh, here, because uh, if you pay attention, these 30 and these 30 and 40 and 40, those are the A values. 20, 20, 20, and 20 and 30, the, the, the second item of each list would be B, and the last item uh, would be the S, the thickness, the 3 and 4 and 3. But here we need to uh, put them in order. So in order to do that, there is a well-known node in Dynamo and really common and useful in all the scripts, trust me, is list.transpose. As you can see here, now in the first list, in zero list, we have 30, 30, 40, all the A1. And in the second one, we have 20, 20, 20, and so on, which represents the second item, which represents the B values. And also the last list would be the S, the thickness. Now, in order to get them in a separate list, here we write a uh, uh, code black. Uh, I, I changed the name of the code black. These are the code blacks, and I changed them A, B, and S in order to prohibit from confusion later. And I get the each list separately. Here it will be shown. But consider because this node has already converted our data, these numbers, to the string, in order to later assign these values uh, to the parameters, we need to again convert them from string to the number. So we need this node called a string to number in order to convert them to number. And as I mentioned before, the other parameters like R1, R2, and A1, I got them separately because they didn't have this problem of the, like ABS. They were already separated by the Excel file. So we just need to remove uh, the first item, uh, the title with the rest of the items and so on. Uh, but uh, consider here, uh, there is one step uh, still here that we have to explain before assigning the parameters. If you pay attention in the Revit file, now we just have this family and this type, one type. Now we have to just create the different uh, types, uh, different duplicates, and then later in the last step assign the values. So we need a node called element type that duplicate which get the element type we have we already have in the Revit. And we need to define names for the duplicated items. So for the names, you can assign anything that you want with the dimensions or any other string that you want. But uh, here, just an example, uh, I use in a string L dash angle plus a variable A. And these variables would be uh, ABS, which is written in the Excel file, these ones. So if you run your code, your uh, the, the name of the duplicated items would be like here. You can put anything, any string here as you want. And also we need element type dot by name and assign the name of the family we already have here. This one, the family name, the type of this, 
family beam. I wrote it here correctly and uh, import it to this node. So now we have the, the element. We have to import it to this and the name to the next. So now if I run it until here, it will be completed. So now if we select our family, okay, it didn't happen. Let me just check what happened here. Uh, okay, let me just disconnect it, put it on the automatic way, and then, okay, now I think it's right. Yeah, I'm sure about that. Yeah, exactly. All the types are here and created correctly, but mm, uh, with the specific and correct names that we assign. Why it didn't happen on the first? Because before I explained you, once I uh, wanted to test the code, so once I put and imported this one to this node, and because of that, we uh, take an error here, and uh, it didn't read this family anymore. So I had to disconnect it and again connect it. OK. Uh, the last step would be assign the values to the specific parameters, because we already created that duplicated ones. But for example, this duplicated one, if you go to the edit type, the values for the parameters are not correct because we haven't assigned the values yet. We just created them with the names. In order to assign the values, we need a node, which is a well-known node, set parameter by the name. We need the elements, which is the which are the duplicated elements. Uh, we need the parameter names. And consider this point, we need to do this one by one for all the parameters. Here we have the six parameter. And I wrote in the double quotation, separately a b s r1 r2 and a1 which represent the s string and represent the name of the parameters and assign them to parameter name now we need the value so this is the a to a b okay it gives us a crash because i had to put it in the manual way value and here also r1 to r1 r2 to r2 and A1 to the A1. Now if I run the code and then get back to the... Yeah, exactly. So if we go to the edit tab, yeah, it's right. As you can see, A40 as we have in the name, 20 would be the B, S thickness would be 3, and also the A1, uh, R1. Let's compare with the Excel file here in order to make sure. This is 4023, 4023, this one. This road, R1 and R2, 3.5, 3.5, 2 and 2. And also here, the last A1, which is 14.6. Why it is written here 15? If we select to this cell, it is rounded in the Excel. So the actual value is 14.6. So it's right for here, for us. Correct. Uh, okay, perfect. Uh, just I noticed something uh, here in the Dynamo. We got an error here, but why this error we got? Uh, if we go back to the Excel file, uh, this is for the A1, the last item. In the A1, sometimes we don't have any values here in the Excel file. It's no. And we got that error for this last item just for that. You can assign anything here with a random number here, or even you can uh, do it in the Dynamo, but another set by parameter. Whenever you find a null value, you can assign that. So perfect guys, we have done the mission and it's uh, finished. So this, this was the today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. I, I was really excited because the, this was the first time that I recorded a, a video in the YouTube for YouTube. And uh, I hope in the next videos we can follow and have uh, better videos and better tutorials. Thank you guys for paying attention to this tutorial and this video. Uh, I hope that you enjoy it and you learn from it. Uh, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and put the notification on because in the future, in the upcoming videos, I'm going to develop more and more tutorials uh, about the Dynamo Revit and also other softwares. Thank you again and see you next time.